Before the next show starts, let's enjoy an intermission. You'll find our snack bar chock full of good things to eat and drink. Tasty, tempting hot dogs, thirst-quenching soft drinks, fresh, crunchy popcorn. Jack is uh, going to take care of the overlook for us this winter. Physically, it's, it's not a very demanding job. The only thing that can get a bit trying up here during the winter is a tremendous sense of isolation. I don't suppose they uh, told you anything in Denver about the tragedy we had up here during the winter of 1970? I don't believe they did. The winter caretaker killed his family with an axe. Is there something bad here? When we first came up here, I thought it was kind of scary. A lot of things happened in this particular hotel over the years. And not all of them was good. <laughs> Isolation. It'll be lots of fun. Mental breakdown. Exactly what I'm looking for. Claustrophobic reaction. They'll love it. I thought that it was what the old timers used to call cabin fever.
we're finally on vacation. First a detour, then the jeep breaks down. Well, our trip is off to a great start. What is this place? It's not on the map. It's like the town is frozen in time. Good people of Appalachia, we'd like to thank you all for coming out this evening. This is a glorious moment for all of us as we open the first known cinema experience since before the Great War here in Appalachia. We'd like to personally thank the 5-0 new responders for helping us rebuild this theater, as well as keeping it free from scorched, ghouls, robots, giant crickets, mutants, mutated dogs, Raiders, Snallygaggers, Yaogwai. Ah, fuck me. You get the point. Thank you, Commander Johns, for seeing the value of theatrical arts in the wasteland. My name is Dutch Walker, and I'll be your host tonight. Y you may have seen some of my work on your local one-channel TV station. Responders undercover? Does that ring a bell? Yes? No? Oh, right, right, damn it. Well, this isn't about me. Let's move on, shall we? Tonight and in the coming months, we plan to bring a host of entertainment through the door. Singers, yeah, I'm looking at you, Fenwa. Live stage performance, plays and the like. Most dear to our hearts, however, Machinima. For those of you not familiar with Machinima, it is first and foremost an art form. Machina artists utilize their favorite gaming engines to capture and create story, 
adventure, movies, and shows. This may sound easy, but trust us, it's not. Many times, machina artists must work around limitations within the games themselves. Not all games provide camera modes or in-depth filming tools. This is up to the creativity of the artist. Then, they must write a script, get the actors, create a storyboard, capture the scenes they need, edit them, add voiceover acting, special effects if they have the right tools, sound, and well, you get the point. Hundreds of hours can go into capturing a mere 20 or 30 minute experience. While crafting machinima experiences can be daunting, it is at the same time also rewarding. Each artist has their own unique flair and style, just like a director. Machinima can be as simple or as complex as the artist chooses it to be. At its core, good machinima is paired with an even better story. In real movies, pictures tell a thousand words. In machinima, story is what drives the art. Tonight, we are featuring an amazing machinima team that creates their productions within Fallout 76. Their most notable work, and what we plan to show you tonight, is their series based on an in-game quest titled Order of Mysteries. They've taken the story which is delivered in-game by a computer terminal and have given it an amazing life. We're going to show you the film first that started it all to wet your palate. We'll then introduce you to the production team themselves. Those of you who are joining us in the chat stream tonight, we have Sergeant Grace O'Malley keeping an eye out for your questions or comments. Please feel free to chime in, we want to hear from you. After each film, we'll have a discussion time, and this will give you in the chat a chance to ask your questions. Now, without further ado, please join us in watching Episode 1 of Into the Mystery. Exactly four years since, well, Merry Christmas, Mom. I'll open a Nuka Dark for you at dinner. At least this weird pit boy I found out near the vault lets me know what time it is. Not that time has any meaning anymore. Who the hell is this? Wait. I, I recognize that outfit. That's... No, it can't be. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be the mistress of mystery. On the playground, the boys would fight over who got to play the silver shroud, but no one, no one dared try to claim the mistress of mystery. Well, there was this one time a new girl Natasha claimed she wanted to be the mistress of mystery when we were getting ready to play the Unstoppables. Everyone froze and looked at me, but I just smiled and said, Okay, I'll be the bad guy. I'll be the crafting monster. Little princess ended the day with a right bloody nose, and now she knew. I play the mistress of mystery in this school. In hindsight, I don't think that's something the mistress would approve of, but maybe... To me, the mistress was willing to do whatever it took to accomplish her goal, and being the mistress of mystery was mine. When I found out that Shannon Rivers herself was moving to town, I was over the moon. I had so many questions, but I was smart enough to realize she's just an actress. She wasn't the mistress. She just played her on the radio. I did sneak away one day and walk the however many miles it was to her mansion. I'd never seen so many houses like that. We weren't West Virginia poor, as my dad would say, which I guess was really poor, but no way were we ever going to be in this part of town unless we took a wrong turn. They had a sentry by patrolling for Christ's sakes. Wind's blowing pretty hard off the ash heap today. Like a dummy... I left my filter at home. Mm. Sure, I'll just wear this dead girl's mask. 
What are the chances I don't already have whatever diseases are on it? I saw Miss Rivers and her daughter get out of a town car and go inside. That was my one time seeing her in the flesh. Well, the one time before the war. There'd be one other time later, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, rich people are so weird. But damn, that's pretty cool. Hello? Miss Rivers? Are, are you still alive? Are you, are you dead? Hello? Looters look to have hit this place pretty hard, but only recently. I'd heard rumors that the Rivers family was still holed up in here, but no one had ever seen them. So what was a girl who I'm pretty sure wasn't her daughter doing out in a kind of mistress of mystery outfit dead on a mountain? This doesn't make any sense. My God, can can you guys believe? Can you guys believe? Can you hear me? All right, in the in the chat. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of an echo. Wonderful, we wonderful. You in the chat. Wonderful, everybody. Well, my God, um, welcome once again. Uh, I had a moment to speak with you a few a few bits ago, but um, you guys just witnessed uh, the very first film of the group today that we uh, have brought into the theater. Um, some of them we had to fly in and they weren't able to make it, so they're still overseas. Uh, as you might imagine, um, a lot of the tech uh, and the wasteland is uh, broken these days. So we're going to um, be speaking with them live via Pip Boys uh, today. So we hope that you all enjoyed the first film. Uh, uh, based upon the Into the Mystery or Order of Mysteries uh, quest, which is found in Fallout 76, as most of you should know. But let me take no more time. But I want to uh, introduce um, our cast today, the uh, creators of this amazing machinima. And we're going to start uh, with the Vaultist. Uh, Vaultist, why don't you just take a few moments to um, introduce yourself and just tell us a, a little bit about what you do uh, for this project. 
Hello guys, this is Vaultist. I, uh, in this particular episode I was not involved, but for the project I was taken on uh, as a film, film and director and editor for episodes two and three. And essentially I was uh, producing my own trailers and they brought me in because of that and uh, attempted to remake what was written in such a great way and create this machine out of it. And uh, I got started by doing Instagram, and that's basically where most of my content comes from at the moment. And uh, have not been doing Machinima for more than I'd say this is about twelve months in now. Um, this is my third Machinima that I've made myself, um, or being part of a team. And so that's basically where I'm coming from at this point. I love filmmaking. I love making trailers. Never really did it Machinima before, but hopefully it translates. And uh, yeah. That's yes, it. I'd say so. And uh, yes, well, welcome, welcome to the Watoga Cinema Theater. We're, we're happy that you are finally able to make it here. And uh, we apologize um, for Commander John's complete mishap and mishandling of the facility before. So on behalf of that. Now, let's, uh, let's move on to Bloodied Mess. Um, please feel free to introduce yourself, Bloodied, and uh, tell us a little bit about what you do with the project. Uh, hi, I'm Alfie. Um, Bloody Mess is my in-game name, and because I make board games, my YouTube channel, which is normally where I do publish stuff, is now called Evil Corp Game for my board game. Uh, you'll hear also from Michael Tanner, the writer, and he's probably going to tell you about his comic, and you should go and pre-order that shit. Um, yes. I, <clears throat> I've been making a bunch of um, trailers where I'd sneakily use the existing audio from great trailers, which had a good resonance for making in the game. So things like The Shining um, were just perfect because of course we have like Torrent's house, which is just next door to what you're seeing now on the screen, Riverside Manor. And there's that great kind of, there's a little um, area on the terrace there where there's like a little tricycle and stuff. So that's what I was making with my friend Jazz, who's in the audience right now, and some other friends and my sister Chris. Who we were the unremarkables. That, that's how we position ourselves. <laughs> so I kind of, you know, really love the Fallout universe. Just absolutely love it. Um, and then when I was making those trailers, I think like you, uh, Dutch, and the Five O crew, there's an inherent limitation in not being able to speak, like not being able to have a character emote. Right. And so I right. started started to learn um, After Effects and started to experiment with trying to bring char characters to life. As you can see in this episode, which was the first one, that was a very, um, uh, I don't want to say amateurish, although of course it was because I was just picking it up, but, you know, just trying to feel my way through it. So um, I worked with Rifle on this one and have worked with the, the crew um, on the other two. And we've kind of just felt our way forward. So when we brought Voltest on board after having seen his incredible trailer for uh, Machinima Called the Town that he's making in Fallout, we have progressed as a team remarkably, I think. And I hope that yes. anyone watching sticks with it through the whole thing because the big payoff here, I think, is actually in watching how wonderfully the series progresses. Yeah, so we, we can we can validate that. Um, th this is one case of uh, Machinima where, and we're actually happy that we're doing this uh, in the theater because you can see the progression, not only of their experience, but also the tech work uh, and that, and, uh, you know, those things of nature. So you can actually watch the films get better and better. So. Um, I definitely, and I do want to say, you said um, your mouth moving machinima was amateurish. I'll have you know that there was a fucking meltdown over here at the 5-0 when we saw people's mouths moving, because the last thing, the last thing we wanted to see was, was someone else make mouths move because it makes everything, you know, whatever. Very good, fellas. Good, good dog taps. All right. All right. Um, we're moving on now. I, I do want to point out this next gentleman, uh, he was mentioned momentarily ago with a uh, comic, um, book. Uh, he can tell us a little bit more about that. But I, I will say that um, the writer of any of these projects in a filming project or a machinima has, has one of the key roles of the entire process, obviously, and that is telling a story. Now, um, we want to introduce you to Michael Tanner, and he is, uh, I believe, the lead script writer. But please, Michael, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do for the project. 
Hey, uh, yeah, this is Michael Tanner uh, on Xbox. I am Hurtin Ernie one two three. If anyone wants to find me, uh, yeah. So I write the scripts for this series, which, because of the the nature of this being more like a film project, is really just the first part of it. So I write the scripts, and then other talented creators they come in and they figure out how to um, how to make that happen. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I'm a big Fallout fan. Have been since I stumbled upon Fallout three years ago. Um, this is my first Machinima series I'm working on, uh, mm -hmm. but primarily I'm a comic book writer. Um, I do I co-write a graphic novel series called Junior Braves of the Apocalypse, which is about like kids fighting zombies. And then uh, alluded to earlier, my big project right now is a series called Orcs in Space, uh, which was uh, co-created by Justin Roiland from Rick and Morty and um, Abed and Rashad Gaith. Uh, and I was brought on to script the series with them. Um, and it's coming out in July, but it's up for pre-order now. So if you love comic books uh, and you have a local comic book store, go in and tell them you want them to order Orcs in Space because it is hilarious. Yeah, you got to pre-order it. Pre -order. Um, mm -hmm. So it's waiting there for you in July when it finally comes out. But it's going to be a really funny series. It looks great. The art is by Francois, French last name, which I always mispronounce. So I will, uh, Francois. That's, right. That's the easiest um, way to do it, trust me. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. All can, right. Can, and, I, can uh, I just make a, a small note there, yes. Michael? There was a, inside the in the Twitch stream right now, there was a radio, you know, the, the standard Fallout radio. And I, I, I just wanted to mention that I met Mike um, on the Apocalyptic Aristocracy Discord where Chad hosts a like a writer's room kind of thing. And Michael and I were there and he, was, he talked through the script of this incredible um, story of Two guys in the wasteland. <clears throat> what was it called, Mike? What's the script? Oh, called? yeah, Cigarette. The Tobacco Gambit. The Tobacco um, Gambit, yeah. Which I originally wrote at, it was supposed to be a, like a, a comic for like a anthology um, that ended up not happening. Um, so I brought it to the to the writer's group, just kind of read it. I was like, I don't know what to do with this, but I wrote this thing and I really liked it. And Alfie was like, hey, I've got an idea. So that was our first collaboration, the two of us. And there it goes. And so yeah, yeah, and that's how it went because the timing was just right. Like, I went to Mike and was like, I was talking to Rifle, and we have this idea. He wants to do something about the Mistress of Mystery, and what do you think about the idea of there being like an NPC that's ours? Like, we write her into the game, and she experiences it in this way. And then we got we got working on this, and yeah, it's just funny thinking back, isn't it, Mike? Like sitting on yeah, a campfire, like, the small world. Like, that's yeah, very small world. And then like through that, I, I should mention also, I do have one of the voices on the uh, Far From Heaven uh, Fallout podcast. Um, I do Warren, the reformed, kind of reformed uh, raider character, uh, which someone in the the. The yes. Twitch chat just remind me. I should mention that far from heaven. <laughs> right. Yes. And yeah. Very good. A very good podcast. So definitely. Um, I did not realize. I have to say. I. I. You know. Commander sent me in here with all these papers, and he, he thinks that I actually take the time to look at them. Um, but now I do see that, and so wonderful. I do want to commend you for your work on that for sure. Um, all right. Well, let me let me move on a little bit here. Um, we uh, are missing two individuals. One of them, though, however, has just entered the chat, and that is the one and only voice actress, uh, Gamer Girl FSM. Um, we like to call her Jessica. I hope she doesn't mind us using her name there. But um, she she actually is not Viola in real life. Viola, and uh, she's she's Jessica, uh, Gamer Girl. But wonderful, glad to have you here, Jessica. I'm glad that you could be here. We, we do have a little piece uh, with Jessica at the end, um, so please stay tuned for a little uh, interview with her. Um, I also have to mention, if you look up in the corner of the theater right now, there's a dark uh, corner of the theater right next to the spotlight. You'll see an outline of a gentleman sitting up there. Um, he goes by the name of Rifle. Uh, Rifle Gaming, I believe, is uh, the, the man uh, who is sitting up there, and he does have a sniper scope on my head. I can feel it. Um, at any rate, um, he is not able to join us, but many of you know of his work, obviously. Um, if you don't, then I'm not sure you're, you're a true uh, Fallout 76 fan, but um, yeah, don't take that personal. 
if I said that out loud. All right. So, well, we want to welcome you gentlemen to and ladies to um, the Watoga Cinema. And uh, we thank you for taking the time to be here and to share your work with us. Um, you elaborated on it a little bit, but I have to know what uh, what inspired you to choose Fallout 76 as the game that you wanted to create Machinima in. And, and before you answer that, I will preface for any of you in the audience who have ever tried to film in this game and or uh, you know create uh, projects like this, um, you know it is not an easy task. There is some limitation uh, to the camera modes and things of that nature. And, and my God, if I see another Twitch about panning and how tough it is, we all know it's tough. That's for sure. All right, we get it. Now, but at any rate, what, what made you decide to choose Fallout 76 as the game to create a project altogether? Well, I mean, I, I guess I, I speak for myself here, but I imagine for all, like, we're Fallout players. What are we going to do? Go and do it in, like, Grand Theft Auto? And uh, maybe next year. Well, yeah, sure, sure. That's true. I mean, I guess you you, you live where you sleep, right? Okay. Yeah, like, I, I don't really consider myself much of a gamer because the only games I play are mm. Fallout and Wasteland 3. Like, that's, literally, like, all I play. 100%. Like, yeah. This is, this is this is my world that I live in, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. pretty much a Fallout player only, and I think it was Lockdown Fever. Right, Lockdown <laughs> Fever. Right. That was basically well, it. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good point, isn't it, Baltus? It was like, you know, we, we had Lockdown 1. Lockdown 1, I was also I was um, on a three-month gardening leave from my previous role. So for three months, I wasn't allowed to work. And if you're not allowed to work, what do you do? Well, you, you have to learn something new. And it was because of that that I was super into not only playing the game, but because I, my brain is like it is. It was like, how can I use the game to make something? You know, I mean, we made like... You know, we made a video game inside Fallout 76. That was fun. Building like a m machine, but it came down to how do we make film? And, and that's right. kind of how we all eventually came together, really. Right. Lockdown. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I think um, you know, also doing work in the the game itself, um, the the lore of the game and the vast number of um, things that it gives you to build story off of. I think uh, you know Bethesda had it right when they made a sandbox, um, even from a lore standpoint, that allows us all to use our imaginations. So, yeah, I, I could see that being um, one of the main reasons there. Um, who on this first film, if you can just say your names, did all of you work on this film uh, on the first one, or was it just a few of you? Who 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 was it? Uh, everyone apart from Voltus, because we haven't okay. met him yet. Gotcha. Okay, so I just wanted to clarify that. All right, let's talk a little bit about the writing. Um, Michael, we had uh, touched base a little bit about uh, your work there. Um, obviously, uh, writing is going to be one of the key components of any good story. Um, you, you have some story already built into the game. Um, from the law there, what what was that writing process like? Like, how did you get started with that? How how does one get the pen on the paper and write that first word? This was a good one to kind of work with because I because uh, Alfie um, brought it to me as like because I because I think Rifle had the concept of wanting to do something with the Mistress of Mystery questline. Um, so and Alfie wanted to like uh, create an NPC of our own. So. I, it was one of those things where you're given a box of toys and I wanted to be sure not to break anyone else's toys. So that's why we, we've kind of said it nebulously before all 76 opens, but not too far. Um, but early enough where Scorch Beasts and Scorch Plague aren't really a thing yet. So we, we've kind of set the time frame, and it was really important to me to set this up. And I think we'll, we'll see this through the rest of the series is that this, Viola isn't in place of a player character necessarily doing this quest um, and finishing it and, and it be done. She is, she is experiencing this quest separate from what any player would. Um, so she's not breaking anything. And the idea is that right. this happens in the continuity of the game. Right. So Viola has experienced this and mm -hmm. all the pieces are still intact for the player character for a real person playing the game to go through and experience this quest line on the road. Yeah, that's actually they might do things a little differently. Um, but it'll be like we're we're not breaking anything to to have our way with the story. We're 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 doing this story 
within the continuity of the larger Fallout 76 game. Right, that's an excellent point that uh, I didn't even pick up on that, to be honest, that uh, you're right. It, uh, it, it is almost as if you are following just one individual of, of the many that will eventually do this quest and giving it, um, you know, some actual tangible experience. So, yeah, they're very well done. Yeah. yeah. So I w- from there, I wanted to create, like, who's a compelling a compelling character that we'd want to watch, like, experience this. So developing Viola's backstory, which I'm pretty sure Alfie came up with the idea of the, the mom being killed in the Christmas flood. Um, and so that kind of gave her, Viola a little bit of a backstory, but then fleshing out, like, what her personality was. I wanted her to be, like, a Mistress Mystery fangirl. Um, <laughs> right, right. And kind of, like... <laughs> have rougher edges like she's not like a she's not bubbly she's not you know she's abrasive and um like alf always loves to point out like that i i put in a reference to goodfellas in there with like ever since mm-hmm. i was a kid all i want to do is miss was a mission which is a reference to goodfellas. Right. that's good because um, that was that i wanted a character with that mindset who like had that like i not mobster mentality, but that mentality of like wanting to be that character. And then, you know, right. she's, she's so, sort of absorbed into getting to live her fantasy. But what does that mean in this horrific post-apocalyptic uh, West Virginia that she's in? Right, right. Very interesting. And so you- I think what's so cool, so, sorry, is yeah. how Voltist has brought that out in the last couple of chapters. Mm-hmm. Just that whole kind of... I am the mistress of mystery, you right, know, because right. she is. She's living in a fantasy world, as Jessica says. Actually, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's sad. She but to be a little sassy. Really yeah, super sassy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So, so the liberties that you took were very little, to be honest with you. I mean, it, you stuck stuck right along with the storyline and just kind of followed what uh, this one individual would have done, but we're not changing the overall story. So. That's excellent. Yeah, I, we we wanted to stay away from this being a playthrough. Right, right. That's not necessarily like, even though, honest, honest to God, watching any YouTuber who did a playthrough of this quest was so helpful to me as uh, as the writer. Sure. So be, it's, it was my research. I could watch Oxhorn play through like a twelve part series of this <laughs> of this quest line, and it helped me be like, oh, okay, so that's it's like that's Cliff's notes. The quest line again. Yes. Here's what we can do. Right. Um, so it was like changing stuff because i think we'll see like in the last episode we'll see is that where some of the items she has to collect are are slightly different than what they'd be right. in the game quest line uh, just so it's not it's not a playthrough but it's still it makes sense and it's in it's lore friendly i guess the best way to say it. it's lore friendly like where she finds this stuff and how it happens gotcha gotcha Okay, so let me let me ask you this. We're almost uh, going to move on here in a moment to the ne- next film. So everybody, um, if you need to grab your popcorn, your beer, uh, your wine, whatever you need, maybe a bathroom break, you have a moment here. But um, I do have to ask, uh, just in general, two questions. The first, what was the biggest challenge uh, of making this very first film? Just one. Uh, so if you had to pick out one, maybe for each of you or just as a group, uh, what was the biggest challenge overall? For this particular shoot, <laughs> that was Salt God Vod. So Salt God, <laughs> who is the in this uh, in this first chapter, he's the uh, principal cinematographer. So he captured most of it, yes. and he also plays Viola in game. Um, so that's Salt God. What's up? What up, guys? Sorry, I can't All right, myself. so Salt oh. God is here. We'll, we'll actually, yeah, if you want, uh, Salt, uh, we have we missed your introduction. Uh, why don't you go ahead and just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of who you are and uh, what your role is in this project. All right, well, first of all, everybody on Xbox knows me. I'm a troll. Oh. I enjoy Rick rolling people and stuff like that. Oh, boy. On the project, on the project, all I really do is get frustrated dealing with rifle and vault. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm the main character, so I've got to basically work my life schedule around filming process. Yes. So you are the camera. Generally, you're the cameraman, then. Is that correct? Uh, that would be Voltist and rifle. Okay. Okay. Sorry. In chapter one, there was um, a real mixture of responsibilities because we were all operating in a more independent way, in a way, 
So Rifle hadn't made narrative-based machinima as much as this. He'd done some sort of segments and stuff. I'd done some narrative-based work, and I had a kind of idea of where I wanted to go. Right. And we all were working together in order to kind of realize a vision. I took on the role largely of um, 3D animation and bringing the character to life through the right. moments that were appropriate. Salt did some uh, of the filming, and of course, like he said, was often frustrated by just having to do reshoots. Like, right. I mean, gosh, yeah. I, I guess uh, you saw the point to any moment in this entire Twitch stream if you're watching it and, uh, and remember. All right, the first the first <laughs> moment was me and Rifle shot like two hours worth of videos, and Rifle. Was not recording. It didn't catch anything. So, like the whole thing. Oh God! Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, that yes. Been there so many times. It also, it yeah. also happened with Baltist. Yep. Well, <laughs> my you, yeah, stuff has happened. Okay. Good company. Good company. Happen. Yes, that that is probably that is probably the the biggest feeling of wind out of a sail that you can have, especially when you know you captured every shot you wanted, and the and the daytime cycle and the nighttime cycle just worked. Oh God, yes, yes. Okay, and we can relate to that. Okay, so before we start the next film, just. One uh, one answer, uh, start to finish, how long did film one take you to complete, if you can give me a rough estimate, just so people in the audience understand that this is definitely not something that you just pop on in a day and do. What Start to finish uh, film one. Within a month, about 60, 70 hours worth of videos yep. of just recording time itself, right? not including... Edits. The and, guy doing the editing and everything like that. So yes. it, was yeah, it, was, a, it was about two months. It was about two months, and it's a short film. Yes, know? yes. Uh, pretty representative of learning as we go. Right, right. Yeah, and definitely. And that's what that, I want people to pick up on that because this first film, obviously, they were learning. They were gelling, coming together, uh, learning the processes. And it, it took, you know, over two months to do. Now, as they get better and better, it'll be interesting to hear, uh, and I will ask that question on each film, how long did it take? The technicalities obviously will grow, um, as, uh, and as that grows, the, the level of uh, in-depthness to the films is going to grow. So it will give a good appreciation for the amount of work from multiple people that go into making one of these films. So everybody in chat, um, if you're ready, uh, we're going to progress now on to film number two. Um, I, the few, a few things I want to point out here, um, you will definitely start to see the change in the cinematography. Um, and I, I want you to note, if, as you look at this current one, uh, as we go into the next, the, the level of maturity, if I might use that word, and I use it very lightly on myself, but if I might go into that, um, it, it, you can see the angles, the thought processes, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the machinima art form from a production standpoint after film number two. So please stick around, watch this next film with us. It's a little bit longer than the first, and uh, I think you will. Uh, it will be exciting to see the changes that take place between the two. Here we go. First, I thought maybe it was a film set. We'd read about the Silver Shroud's TV show and just assumed the mistress would be on it too. 
I thought, is this why she moved here? They were going to film it here in Charleston? And that's, that's when I noticed a terminal was still on. New initiate registration? Sure. Why not? Number one. Listen to the headmistress's introduction. Hello, dear. Welcome to the Order of Mysteries. I'm sure you're a little nervous. I know. It's a lot to take in. You got that right. But the girls wouldn't have invited you here if they didn't think you were ready. What girls? Ready for what? Eight years ago, I began training the girls we adopted to fight like the mistress of mystery. The hero I played for all those years on the radio. Does that sound a little silly? I suppose it did to me too, at first. But the world needs the mistress. It needs people with the strength to face the darkness, the will to survive against any odds. It needs you. Nope. I met Shannon Rivers and her daughter one time after the war. It was a week or so after the flood. So many bodies just everywhere. I found her though. I found my mama. I brought her here. Are you all alone? Mistress? Dear, I'm sorry. If you need somewhere to go, we can offer. What are you talking about? I'll be fine. When the time comes. Wait, I know that voice. What's this about? Mother! I don't know what this is, but I don't need anyone. Just leave me alone. Never saw him again. I didn't understand what was happening back then, but now... It's time for you to join our sisterhood. The Order of the Mistresses of Mystery. You won't have to walk this path alone. For the next few months, you'll be training with one of your sisters. If you have someone you want to work with, that's fine. If not, Kryptos will assign you a mentor. And as soon as I get back, we'll sit down for tea. Just the two of us. I promise. Somehow, I don't think you're keeping that promise, Miss Rivers. I went back to the computer, or cryptos as she called it. First, I had to find a mentor. This is where I thought the computer was just messing with me. It randomly assigned me a mentor. Natasha Hunt. Oh, come on. Natasha had been a part of this? That princess? <laughs> I followed the instructions on Kryptos, and I tell you, Miss Rivers had been real busy since the war. There were whole sections on here detailing the lore of the fictional Mistress of Mystery, which I don't want to brag, but I already knew all of it. Blade of Bastet, Eye of Raw, this was all comic book stuff. But then it got into the real world. Miss Rivers taking in the girls, training them, fighting raiders. This was crazy. I spent a whole mess of my life just trying to survive. Miss Rivers wrote in one entry, we need more than survival, we need heroes. Looking at the screen, looking all around at me at what she built, and looking at the world outside right now. Maybe she was right. But who was that poor girl on the mountain? Where was Miss Rivers? Where was the rest of the sisterhood she was writing about? I had one clue. My new mentor. 
Natasha Hunt, a girl I bloodied on the playground when we was kids. <laughs> she went on a mission to that ghost town, Lewisburg. So I knew that's where I was headed. But first, I had to see what I could loot. They built a phantom device? Like, like the one the mistress used in issue 244? Dang. Janet really deserves most of the credit. It's a slick system, and networking it into cryptos will save us a lot of bookkeeping. Beyond that, usual mix. Shannon wants a recording device for her next mission. Isabella's gun prototype needed some work. Oh, and Eve has me working on some... It meant I had access to absolutely nothing. Well, except I did get to make it fresh veil secret, so I didn't have to wear that dead girl's... So, there's that. Now, the folks in Lewisburg were unique through... They really kept it up after the bombs, even holding festivals every year. Air quality was always kind of a little rough there, especially once the rock hound got going, but they stuck it out. knew what happened that day. Oh, Natasha. I'm so sorry. She'd been dead a while. One of the responder nurses once told me that the radiation after the war is doing funny things to everything, living and dead. Some folks will be skeletons in a month, and some, well, some will look like they just went to sleep instead of being dead for half a decade. Some will look gone and rotted, and then suddenly, they'll sit up and start chasing you. I grabbed a hollow tape and Natasha's login. All right, everybody. Apologies there. You know, this wouldn't be a uh, constructive stream without some kind of Twitch technical issue. Um, just to do a check, can the audience hear us once again? I want to make sure that the audience is able to hear. Can I get some yeses and nos in the, in the comments section? All good. Lovely. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so I, I really want to start this uh, portion of the uh, discussion off with, through your eyes, as you watch your film again, what are the biggest changes from film one to film two, gentlemen, and, uh, and, and obviously Gamma Girl, if you want to chime in as well, what are the biggest changes from that first to second film that you guys can point out to uh, right off the bat? Well, for me, I believe it would be the pacing and perhaps some of the music and uh, just you know, ed the overall edit and uh, the amount of stuff. that they, they both have their amount of stuff in it, but this one 
had a lot of stuff jammed in there. And so I think that for me, the pacing seemed to improve on three versus two. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like one was all about setting up. So it's quite short. What did it end up as? It's like yeah. eight minutes, eight and a half minutes, something like that. Yeah. It was like, um, a, yeah, it was like seven and a half minutes. Yeah. If I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was all about like kind of setup. There was this kind of framing of her. And then in this second one, <clears throat> now that we understand that, what we did was we started to use the uh, 3D rendering in order to kind of give more of this retrospective voice about what had, where she was now and what she'd been doing. So the, the episode overly featured too much 3D, right? We used a lot of um, uh, the Pip Boy animations, and I think the episode two just had a lot too much of that for me. So my, my take is that episode one was a really good setup. It introduced us to Viola. Episode two was an amazing way of introducing her as the active agent in actually progressing through the story, and we introduced a much more refined method of 3D animation to kind of bring Shannon Rovers to life and make that a little bit more of a feature. Gotcha. Yeah, it was very, uh, it was very different in that sense. Uh, from episode one to two, I mean, we have different cinematography, um, different everything in that sense. And these Pit Boy scenes, though, I thought it was a really good idea that you know. We rarely use that particular part of Fallout to kind of stare at your Pip Boy for very long. It's just kind of it's a cool little area, right? Um, yeah. And so then to use that to kind of put the picture on top of it and make it look like the the person's kind of like looking at it and shaking the arm a little bit is you know trying to keep the video going. Uh, yeah, not too imp- jagged and that's impressive how you did that. Speaking, it, it was a complete nightmare. Yeah. God damn! Yeah. I have to yeah. track. I have to track this. I mean, yeah. the- <clears throat> just, just a moment, um, if you could, for the audience, um, anybody who has made a um, any kind of video in the game that has tried to use a Pip Boy, it, it, absolutely what they're saying is 100% correct. I know from our role plays, we try to use the Pip Boy as much as possible, and it's the damn tracking and keeping the screen in the same place. Um, what did you mean by the tracking? What, what, what technique do you use in order to, to facilitate that? Well, because you've basically got like the screen and the screen moves in um, lots of different directions, right? So it's it's yawing up on on all of the axes. Plus, it's also rotating both forwards and backwards and side to side. So you've got a lot of distortion in the overall surface area of the Pip Boy screen. So when you've got a piece of video that you want to insert into that, you have to track that. Um, surface, so you're tracking the surface so of the, the movement, boy, oh, yes. and then you're mapping the video to it. So the video is always it needs to be in the right position relative to the movement of that surface, which right. is just it's just a drag. It's just difficult. Yeah, that's got to take a vast amount of time, and I, I do want to point that out because. You know, um, some people will say, then just make a movie use, utilizing, uh, you know, the 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 tools that um, are given to you by developers and things of that nature. But when you're making a machinima in a game, you, you don't really have that ability to do the same level of things. So you're, you're really working around the game parameters and then the, the workarounds like you uh, just mentioned with the tracking. So it's got to take a, a mind numbing amount of time uh, sometimes to be able to do just these little details and and the audience really should appreciate that level of of attention to the detail because it keeps you immersed inside the film yeah. and yeah so it's pretty yeah i mean i mean I, I yeah i've always kind of been of personally the point of view that an audience shouldn't be sat going oh my god just imagine how much work this was it's a bit like saying to right. someone who's meant to buy your product look this really took us a lot of time please give me 15 dollars <laughs> right right i right. think uh, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> right. that's just table stakes. The table stakes also pay off in ways that are not apparent. Like having spent all of the time to go in and figure out how these things work gives me a massive payoff for the future. Right. When right. I then need to go and use that that knowledge and implement it for another project. Like it's a sunk cost. Yeah. Um, but I, I will also say that creators like Bundicott, you know, who went to go and use the creator toolkit that Bethesda provides yep. in order to merge elements. Uh, I mean, I think he even he used some he used some game characters from like Halo and some oh, yeah. of his, yes, yes. his machinima, which I, I'm sure you're going to feature him because it's just yes. ridiculous. Yes, he, he's scheduled but, at the end of May. 
Go ahead. And so to your point about like the tools that are provided, yes, Fallout 76 do not have enough tools for people who want to make content. Right. And, and that's just a fact. Right, uh, right. One thing that's a fun trivia fact for everybody in the audience watching, Fog doesn't watch the videos until you guys see it on YouTube. I stay in the dark. This entire thing I haven't read any script. Wow, <laughs> that's impressive. So, so you don't the, the first time you see it, then is the first time it's up on the screen for all of us. Yes, yes, that's fantastic. I though, like to, I like to be like, wow, and I'm not gonna lie. The it, first this one, this what I was doing me, for a few hours. Yeah, right. the first one. <laughs> The first one really set me off. I was all like, right. guys, we did like 60 plus hours of recording and it's like a five, eight minute video. What is wrong with you? Right, right. <laughs> it, it, isn't that impressive? Then I mean, the one, yeah. yeah. Then the second one, I wasn't, ex I, I didn't know about the pit boy scenes or none of that stuff. So that stuff kind of like just blindsided me and I was so like, wow. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, I imagine yeah, a lot of these things had to come about like in a way that I couldn't use Saltbug all the time because he has his own schedule and doing stuff, and I couldn't. Yeah, like I need to film this one particular thing, so I had to actually make a Viola character of my own and bring her up to level twenty-five just to make this, uh, this episode, <laughs> yes. so she can wear the dress in one scene or something like that. So, you know, I had to. This is like me right here, my own character. I couldn't film. Vogue, he wasn't available and i needed to get right. this one shot in so there's all these like little things that come in like that so where, oh yeah sorry sorry yeah. Vogue. <laughs> right so I, i'm going to say you know i think for all individuals that do machinima at levels like this or even that at, at basic levels it really is about the love of the project and watching something you think up uh, come to life uh, more than anything whether people watch it or not i mean we've all been there before we we spend hundreds of hours on a film and you get like five people that watch it or something you know and it's like, that's not what it's about, though. It's, it's that creative process that you're willing to drop and spend hundreds of hours to, just to, to make a Pip-Boy track properly. You know, that, that's impressive. So I have to say. Yeah, I would say it's also the, the joy of, like, learning the new skill, right? Like, right. You're not necessarily, like, wanting to show it off for others. You're, like, you're gaining a new skill. Like, oh, this is fun. I've taught myself how to do this new thing. Right. That, 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 yes, that's... um. That's very noble of you, sir. I, I agree. That, yeah, I, you know, but you know, it, it does help to to have people ooh and ah a little bit. I mean, come on now. I mean, even even other machinimus, you know, you're doing it for us too, right? I mean, come on now. <laughs> it's all good. I, we get it though. We get it. There's a weird sort of um, division there, at least yes. for me, which is that like because I haven't picked up the game in a few months, like to play it. Yes. It's, uh, you know, work and, and everything else. And also just the volume of time that goes into making stuff uh, for the for the project. I think actually, whilst I do care that it's well received and that people see it, yes. I care less about that than I do about the fact that it is good. And we, it is just good. Right. Like that's right. enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. You can look back on it at some point and, and you, you're proud of the work that you did, whether it's, it's seen or not, because you did it. Yes, absolutely. And you want it, to, yeah, to, to fulfill your own vision. And uh, that, that's definitely what that's about, for sure, the love of the art. I mean, that's why it really is art, because it's, you know, in the eye of the beholder, but also, you know, it, it has emotion and connection with the, the artist, I believe. Um, if, if you could give everybody an idea, um, from a machinima standpoint, the technicals, uh, what do you utilize? And we don't need to get the, you know, the product ID numbers and things of that nature, but, but what do you utilize to edit your videos? Are, are you using, you know, uh, a, la a PC? What, how, how do you go about, once you've captured your video footage, how do you edit that? Yes. Um, I use both a laptop and a PC it depends on. The, the scene and the power that um, that's required, but I use uh, like Adobe Premiere Pro yep. and maybe a couple of other things on the side to kind of add to that. Right, right. But primarily that. Gotcha. And now, from a sound standpoint, um, I will say, if, if if the people watching, sound quality has been amazing in all three films. To be honest, the the music choices, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the music shortly because I believe Voltist actually composes 
some of the music for the series. But the music and the timing and the sound effects and the quality of the audio is so fantastic. What 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 are you doing there? So the music is, in my opinion, it's got to be like at least half, sixty percent of of, the, of a film. And without good music, or at least something that kind of goes along with the film, to me, it's, for me as a as a person who you know I love watching movies, and so it takes me out of the film when something like that happens, when the music is not all that good, the sounds not all that good, all right. and so yeah. So basically, um, in this one, I used Pro Tools for my um, sound design, and then also for. Uh, making the music and just uh, kind of putting it together. I use other tools as well to make some of the sounds, but primarily I'm using Pro Tools. Right. And then I'll get all the things, all the tracks, and then all the pieces and parts, kind of put them together and compress them well, down. I also do mixing, uh, audio mixing as well. So I'm versed in having to, you know, produce a record or something like gotcha. that. So okay. that's why that's kind of, I approach it in the same way where I would, you know, how I would approach a record. Right, know? right. So get all the pieces, parts, mix them down, compress them down, whatever. Okay. And then just make sure the timing's all in there. And then, yeah, that's, yeah. that's it all together. Makes, makes complete sense. Okay, so you're, you're, you're in the industry a little bit in that realm, at least. Yeah, slightly. Yep, gotcha. Okay. Well, but also, like, when we were doing episode two, you know, you were listening back to the soundtrack after mixing on multiple devices in order to actually make sure that the levels were correct against the different instrumentation. Yes. Um, yeah. I, ne I never did that with episode one, but it's really clear the difference in episode two because of the balancing that was done. Um, and I think that's another thing. Like, I think, yeah, where we've come to with uh, chapter three is that it's approaching a much more, it's a cinema. Um, yes feeling right it's a piece of film as opposed to being a piece of machinima in a way right right absolutely now um and we will move on to the third that you just mentioned uh momentarily i do want to um kind of end cap this conversation um and with two questions again um the first being do you envision um these films coming together into one big uh like have you have you positioned these films so that you can or is the idea just to kind of keep them as individual chapters? Oh, no, we're going to make a film, but uh, we've been talking about it. And we, we realized that in order to do that, we're going to, we're going to have a lot more work. Roger. Roger yeah, because you're going to have to make the episodes that in this, you know, for episode two, when I first did episode two uh, and hit the ending, and unfortunately, you know, we can't really hit, we didn't, we kind of missed the ending here where it kind of, um, yeah, we kind of um, glitched out. Yeah. The uh, the ending kind of really, in my opinion, was like just kind of whammed. Like right? it just kind of it was a great end cap, like a nice bookend. And right. to try to like splice that into a sort yeah. of a seamless where it goes uh, into another uh, into part three or something doesn't feel like it was it was intended that way. At least right. in, the, in the writing, it's very episodic. <laughs> and that's kind of how I envision it. Right. it. And so as far as I know, uh, Rifle wanted to at least take all of them and at least. Kind of put them back to back, right? Um, right, right. But right. yeah, adding making them all one film is going to be really difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you yeah. know what I'm I enjoy about that it. part? I'm not going to have to do any of that. Y'all don't want me nowhere near the editing devices. <laughs> we're yeah. going to have to have a few uh, cut scenes that we have to film to make that occur. So right, we're yeah, have to do another seventy hours of filming. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So, all right, so let's um get a summary. Dutch, Dutch, this is Sergeant O'Malley. Yes, O'Malley. What can I help you with? Uh, I just have a really quick question. I know you're super busy, but if I could just oh, interject for just a second, sure. you know, because I'm working the whole desk and everything. Do I have a choice? But, uh, Go ahead. No. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I guess. Okay, sorry. Um, so Jessica Starr was wondering if uh, Michael, if he's uh, done further stories in the Fallout universe since writing this. I haven't, but I am open to if uh, if anyone like. Uh, wants me to write any more fallout stuff i'll i'll do it on my own time i'll do it for your podcast i'll do it for your <laughs> cinema I, that's right push it michael like get fallout. it out there yes excellent i'm afraid he's under contract yeah. so. <laughs> are, are we all part of the, the uh what is it the uh, artist guild now the cinema what is it the all you know you know the the artist guild that the uh, actors actors guild that's what it is yes 
designated yeah, caps. Don't tell Salt because he's not getting paid at right. right. <laughs> <laughs> paid with favors. There we go. All right. So if we had to start to finish, uh, brief summary. How long do you think uh, production-wise this this particular piece took? Film two. Um, I would say about two months. Two months. All right. From 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 the time from start to finish. From starting filming to the end, uh, we released it, I think, uh, just before New Year's. Yep. And we started like sometime in mid-November, early to mid-November, so around two months. Gotcha. Okay. So so th technically, I think it's almost almost twice as long as the first one, if I believe, or very close to it. And you, you were still able to knock it out in about the same amount of time. And I would imagine that's just because the level of experience, you kind of you, you made the mistakes early on and you knew what not to do the next time. Yes. Uh, yeah, for me it did. Um, well, this was my my second machine. The first machine I'm up for, for me right. was my town trailer, which took me a, a little bit longer than this actually. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, um, learning from from that and yeah. from watching the very first episode, I was kind of I was I've kind of planned it out a little bit easier right. to film and scheduling and stuff. I, I will. And a lot of it is just down to to the amount of scheduling that's required, right? Not only is yeah. it about being able to get people into the right place at the right time, it's fitting everything around your day job, but it's also about being able to um, uh, come together at the at the right moment and to actually go, have you done that bit? Have you done this bit? Oh, well, then I'm blocked on this. It's a lot like right. running any kind of large scale project, right? right. Um, right. So. Yeah, efficiencies. So, well, to give you an example of that, this church scene, uh, we had to film a couple of times just for uh, some just errors in filming and writing um, interpretation. That would be me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, we had to film this thing like two or th two or three times just to get it all all squared away. And the day night shift, which you have about twenty minutes or so, yes, uh, to get the right timing of, of night and day, and then people their own schedules like can't be on past a certain time. And then, oh, yes. you know, once you hit that, that, that dawn point and somebody's schedule is coming up, you're like, Oh man, you got to do this again or something like that. So yeah, that church scene was really, me. Oh yes. I mean, look, it, it's, <laughs> worth, it's worth noting. Like I know that for, you know, uh, producing all of the 3d animations for this, I was just, I was working day job. So I'd work up, wake up at six, animate until about nine, and then work Good through the day and then start, have something to eat and then animate until 11, 12, did that for a month. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's just super, super time consuming. Right. Right. Um, I, I read an interesting article, um, believe it or not on machinimus, um, or the, those that produce this type of work. And, uh, the, the Charleston Herald had published it and, but it basically said that there is a level of, um, uh, almost depression that can develop from, uh, you know, the, the constant grind of doing the editing processes. I'm not saying that that's the case here, but th there's a very, very real fatigue factor that sets in for machina artists in particular, that um, because of those situations where you are dealing with these technicals and the reshoots and the editing and, and getting up early and going to bed late and you're working your real job. So, yes, definitely as a, as a real impact. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for your viewing pleasure, really what um, probably everyone here would say is is really the pinnacle of this film series, and, and rightfully so, it, it should be, I would say, with all the experiences they have brought into this last film. This last film um, was so big in terms of size that we had to cut it in half with a nice little intermission period. So you'll, you'll watch the first half of the machinima, we'll have a little intermission cut, and then we'll bring up the second half immediately after the intermission cut and finish out the third film, which will be, what was that, gentlemen, around the 20-minute mark around there somewhere? 16-ish. 16. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so yeah. the longest film yet and definitely the most uh, action-packed. I will say I have watched this one many times. Uh, the music choices, the action scenes, very inspiring as we look to do some action and um, yes, so everybody, please join us. This is the final film of this series. Uh, we will uh, have a little discussion afterwards and uh, we'll finish this up. Ladies and gentlemen, the third, see, uh, the, excuse me, the third episode and it is coming your way now.
back as I can remember. I wanted to be the mistress of mystery. was a master of stealth, subterfuge, and infiltration. Your own talent and training are essential. But there were times when even the mistress needed more. Part smoke bomb, part cloaking field. The phantom device threw her foes into disarray while she made her most daring escapes. Frederick has found a way to make a real phantom device. But it requires two components we have in short supply. Search cryptos for leads on stealth boys and hallucinogen gas. Use your training to infiltrate your targets, secure the items, and return them to the production facility. Good luck, dear. And be careful. I was doing sneaking through the woods in a Halloween costume, playing superhero. This was a serious case of the old world blues. Now, Cryptos told me I needed two things to make the Phantom device and. I could find one of the components here. I'd spent nearly every day since the bombs avoiding people, especially people like these. And now suddenly, I had to sneak into this raider camp, steal some secret piece of government technology, and somehow get away? You know. We'll, um, we'll put this out so that, I mean, everybody will be able to watch the full thing. So we'll edit in the uh, full effect once, uh, once it goes to re rewatch that, that, that is the problem with Twitch. Sometimes, sometimes when I'm streaming on Twitch, somebody will like report me because I'll be jamming music in the background. So it'll still say I'm like screaming, but I'm not screaming. Ah, uh, yeah. I think one of the, um, the most fun. My time, so I decided to go the one place I knew hallucinogen was used. Funnily enough, it was the hometown of Shannon Rivers herself, Beckley. Now, Beckley, well, it had been a mining town for over 200 years. And then it became a war zone right before the big war. 
kind of crazy that people might take issue with their jobs being taken by robots. Not because mining is inherently dangerous. It's because the rich bosses, they only wanted to get richer. company sent in strike breaker bots. And when the miners weren't intimidated, that company sent in the army. And the army? They didn't hold back. enough, the thing that brought peace to Beckley was the Great War. to go, and I had to decide what to make next. Hmm, stab something? Or shoot something? <laughs> decisions, decisions.
to actually watching it at a movie theater, which that's what I was trying. The cap, great success. All right, everybody. Uh, yes, it uh, cut us off. All right, everybody. Uh, first, I want to um, um, apologize to our audience as well as our um, guests uh, here that are at the cinema. Um, Twitch seems to be wanting to just chew up whatever it wants and spit out to us whatever it would like. So. I am going to uh, make sure that when we do produce this for a review, um, you will have the full experience start to finish as far as the films go. All right. So make sure that you guys uh, definitely tune in to watch the refilm here. We'll also drop all of the links so you can follow and uh, find uh, Voltus and Bloody Mess and everybody involved uh, and watch the videos as they come out um, from their sites as well. So. As we look at this final film, I think it is very evident. Um, it is really the pinnacle of all of the things that uh, have been been going on with the other two films. Um, you can see the level of cinematography as I'm, I'm even watching it right now with you all. Just those close-ups, the pans, the yeah, just the level of action. And I, I can speak from experience. Um, action scenes terrify me and um, that's why you don't see a whole lot in our filmings because um I, I like a lot of drama I, you know i like the 90210 drama but in this case now the action is absolutely amazing guys and gal why don't you um give us just kind of a a roundabout summary of your feelings on this film um go ahead whoever wants to start and this one really like is uh not not heads and shoulders above the the other two but like you can see like the refinement in the process and even like story-wise to my own horn uh but also like technically the way it's presented like the storytelling this one is is so good like right. objectively removing myself from it this is a good machinima yes yes yeah i mean i think your your note is the right one there because in there was just a moment um a few moments ago in the stream when we we're watching it and <clears throat> viola was looking up at the sniper who's looking at her and it's kind of comedic right i mean it's sort of ridiculous like i'm looking at you you're looking at me am i gonna shoot you hmm, let me turn my head a little bit and it's like it was written by shane black yeah. like <laughs> this yeah. This is a Christmas movie. We need to put a Christmas tree in here somewhere just so we can lay claim to that because it is it, yeah. it is the moment at which I think that your writing really uh, comes out as being ex like stellar and coupled with Voltus's filmmaking, it feels I think like I said in the in the last little segment like it feels like a piece of cinema. Yes, and I know yeah. even though we haven't quite got there on um, chapter five, but chapter four. My God, you're opening for that, mate. Like, we're all going to be sitting well, with our mouths open again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When that music kicks in. After and... four. Oh, my goodness, Ernie. <laughs> I am going to just give you a big middle finger for the <laughs> making me run around with a level one sword and beat things to death. It, it, it's not fun. Well, spoilers, but yeah, that one, that one is is not going to be fun for you guys to film. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he who I'm controls the pen controls the power. Yes. Honestly, yep. honestly, I believe we are almost completely done with it. Me, rifle and bolt, sat down one day because I, my niece was getting born and I had a lot of family coming into town, so that's why I wasn't able to make it last week. And I was going to be busy up until this following week. So we sat down one day. We all got on it like, I'd have to say, 10 in the morning and stayed on till like 8 or 9 at night and knocked out the majority of this of the shots that we needed to get done. I think there's still a couple more things we need to get done. But it's well, not I'm looking major. forward to Simon Pegg staking a copyright claim. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, just work a deal. Work a deal. You know, just. There's yeah, always we're working into his, there's always yeah, yeah, ice there's, cream trilogy. You're right. There's always a deal to be had. So let me um <laughs> just between uh, we you know, we've discussed a lot of the the minutia of the filming process, but what in your opinion and and this goes out to all of us uh, machinimists that are are struggling uh, out here. What do you feel is the biggest difference between a dialogue heavy machinima and this action in terms of the 
filming process? Do you feel um, that is a more laborious process to to do the action, or is it less intensive? Less intensive, uh, like yeah, for yeah, me, yeah. Keep going. Sorry I, I that, honestly boy. think I honestly think like these scenes that are playing right now, the whole Brotherhood versus Raider. Right. These were some of the easiest scenes to get. Right. Right. So it, it looks like, yeah. uh, from my untrained eye, you have, um, you know, you have your scenes very specific and cut, and you knew exactly what you wanted from each shot, and you just made that happen. That's correct. Yeah. Um, the way it went down was we just it wasn't actually the whole battle wasn't scripted. Right. We just had the scripted that it was a there was a battle happening, <laughs> and so basically we had a bunch of guys come in and. I just said, uh, we kind of collected everybody, everyone got armor, everyone got different outfits, everyone got a bunch of grenades, and, and I just kind of replenished all those uh, all those things over and over and over again, and we basically just, sure. I just kind of had right everybody about. shoot in all directions. Yeah, shoot this direction, shoot that direction, run back and forth, do this, right. and I just kind of followed them in different with different camera angles and different techniques, and yep. uh, kind of weaved it together after that um you're well, go going back to chapter two right like we unfortunately it broke off in the stream but there was an amazing moment and for anyone listening go back and watch chapter two i'm going to what, what i'm going to what i'm going to interrupt you what i'm going to do is i'm going to take us over to chapter two and when we get to the point where um that scene starts to take place i'll turn the volume up so Give me a moment just to, yeah, give me a moment to just um, jump us back over there. There may be a small lag as we do that, folks, so just bear with us one moment. Mm, so, yeah, if it comes up on screen, that's awesome. Um, what was happening in that scene, and I don't want to lead you here, uh, Voltest, but I know that it was hard to film. Tell us about why that was hard to film. Ah, okay, so we had roughly the same amount of people, and... It was probably a an issue of control. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this was my first time ever. I think that scene may have been the first time I had actually done a machinima with more than like two people on screen at once, or uh, right. two actors or something like that. And so there was, you know, whatever eight ish people or, or something. Very different. Very Yeah. And so then, you know, um, it, it was sort of like um, nobody knew me. Um, Kind of coming on board rifle was there and he kind of introduced me to people and basically they're like hey he's like kind of do what he says and i'm like okay well uh let's try to set these things up blah blah blah, blah. okay so but it, but it was kind of like people were doing their own thing and sometimes uh it, they were off doing their own thing for a while like you know killing some monsters and stuff coming back getting some xp coming back right and so there's there's a little bit of control <laughs> and wrangling happened and you know somebody Killing rifle lots up <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, dealing with salt, God. Oh, you know, that was, that was really <laughs> difficult. That be like, you don't shoot it. rifle. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> don't shoot him yet. Oh, hang on. Yeah, we had that shot um, with the microphone um, done. I don't know how many times we did that, but we finally got one really good hit, and then it was just the, the magic of editing at that point to get it right. kind of together. But yeah, it's just kind of wrangling. Everybody in, um, especially when nobody knew me, they didn't know, and they didn't know I was. I was wearing a stealth suit, trying to get all. You know, oh my god! Room, so yes, we are. I was. We are absolute. Uh, <laughs> we're twinsies. That didn't help. Right, right. <laughs> so it's you know it's a different of my inexperience dealing with a lot of people. Yep. Um, being new and then just you, you, you had know, no clout at that around. point. Yes, yes, yes. you were developing yeah, the clout. Yeah. Yep. Very yeah. cool. But it turned out pretty well, I think. Oh yes, and we're going to show it that. Out, yeah, that turned out great. Dude. Like that was, I think I watched it maybe between five and ten times because, and I kept on rewinding like to the beginning of it because <clears throat> there's a couple of just key, critical, crazy, how did you do that moments? Like when uh, the woman who's on stage with the microphone and then the bullet not only right, shoots yeah, the microphone, was... but you managed to capture it. Like just nuts, just nuts. Um, I want you guys, yeah, as you watch the uh, film transpire right now, just give me a little cue ahead of time, if you don't mind, as to when you would like the volume to come up. Um, yeah, all my. But yes, I will say, um, watching that second one with that fight, I, I have to imagine that that is when you began to realize that uh, you were going to be able to produce some pretty amazing fight scenes, um, if you even had that in mind for the third one. 
Well, to give you some perspective on how I was thinking about it, like when they talk about like the the Raider versus Brotherhood fight, like the, and how beautiful it looks and how great like they did, and, like the work involved. In my head, my assumption would be that they would just be like two or three of them, maybe, right. like um, and just record their their capture um, of them just attacking that Raider camp with against the uh, NPC, like the in-game AI. Right. I didn't think about them actually like having to like choreograph right right you just like, had the scene an actual firefight and so yep. i was like well why is this taking so long right the question of everybody involved in a production yes why is it taking so long yes yeah it's not as bad as the green screen oh yeah that Alfie had to deal with <laughs> I, I can imagine literally almost crashed his phone with DDoSing him by sending him like 50,000 green screen pictures because he wow. was frustrating me. That. Yeah, I'm so well. Yeah, that, that is a level of tech, yeah, that um, I'm looking forward to, you know, you, you mentioned Bundekut. Uh, we're going to be having him on the show in a few weeks, and um, he's been very involved in the green screen process, so I think it'll be pretty interesting to see and hear his his background with that as well. I know um, you guys, I think, are what we would call tier one machinimists, right? True, you're using incredible <laughs> tier one. I, I, I'm, I'm now coining that phrase. Remember, Dutch Walker coined that phrase, tier one machinimists. All right. So you guys are in that, okay. that tier one level where you're, you're, you know, you're using more technical things. You're willing to invest the time, the energy, the money and the, the you know, the, really the, the brain power to, um, to do that. Oh boy, what are you doing? I had here? to buy. I had to buy an iPhone. Right. To do motion capture. <laughs> I had to buy, and I don't like iPhones. I don't want one. <laughs> I, have I one had to now. buy a whole bunch of different packs just to be able to do just basic stuff like poses that need to be done. Oh, yeah. I'd have to spend like twenty <laughs> bucks on it. Be like, here, I got this now. And then we had to wait for the green screen grass. That was the. Uh, I'm so glad they came <laughs> oh, up with that like three yeah, days. And you missed they it. Oh my God. The grass dropped. We can green screen again. Oh my God. That's it. <laughs> yes, that's it. That is, it. yeah. That sounds like a nightmare. I, I may have to hang up my own shoes after that. So if you guys keep pushing the envelope, you make it easier on us tier two and tier three missionists. Just realize that. <laughs> All right. When, when you do that, eventually, eventually, we don't feel like we need to keep up anymore. And it's very liberating, fellas. I have to say, it's very, it's very liberating. At some point, it's not machinima anymore, right? Well, it, it becomes live action or something. Well, yeah, I mean, you know. It's, it's straight it, to live action. Yeah. And, that's the, yeah, and it's straight to Hollywood. All right, are we getting pretty close, I think, to that scene? I think so. I yes. believe so. Yes, so what Almost we're going to do. like half to death. Yeah, pretty sure. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn up the sound. I'm going to turn up yeah, the, the shooting scene when they, they're sniping all the people in the town. Yep. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, well, it just, it just bombed out. Uh, <laughs> yep. All right. You know what? I, I'm, 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 I'm done with it. So as soon as I made one change, it reset the whole thing. So, all right. We did that for nothing. But, you know, it was good discussion there. <laughs> yeah, like I said, tier two, tier three. All right. Just deal. You know, it's the wasteland. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, gentlemen, that's right. Uh, this brings me up to our last um, biggest, you know, and I say biggest because it really is uh, the voice acting and all of the creation uh, in Fallout 76 has become really something of its own, uh, you know, community. There are podcasts, there are machinimists, there are uh, TV shows. Um, such as ours, and uh, you know, this isn't my real voice, but it is. It's, Shout out to right. Dad. So, I mean, right now you're witnessing voice acting, right? So, um, the voice actress in this, uh, most of us in the community know her uh, through the Chad, a Fallout podcast. Um, I mean, who has not heard of Chad and Kenny and, and the group over there? Um, make sure to drop a At little first, little love for them in the chat. Um, but. Jessica, really, and most TV of this, uh, uh, Gamer Girl, she kind of carries thought, a good portion of the first here? two, um, it really does carry in terms of the voice acting load, um, the first two films. And um, 
Um, before I play the little what montage, uh, we, we did a, uh, a pre-recorded um, interview. Uh, we just put it together today so that Jessica would have a voice here. She has to work, I believe, at the, um, where is it that you work now in the wasteland? Uh, is it Bobby Spags? Is he the one that's got you there over in the Maya? I don't know, Jessica, but you can New explain initiate. it later Registration? to all of us. But at any rate. He's the drop sure. is playing on the machinima. Right. Yes. Oh, the sound is playing on the machinima. Shit. Number there we one. go. <laughs> all right. Hopefully everybody made out most of that. And if not, um, yes. yes, okay, we are talking about the voice actresses. So I'm going to play um, Jessica's uh, basic interview. It's about a seven minute interview, very insightful. So I, I encourage you to stick by, <laughs> listen to her words, her experience with the um, creating this machinima from a voice actor's perspective. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that up right now. And hopefully Twitch will allow us to watch the whole thing. Damn it, Hawkins. How did I let you and Commander Johns talk me into this interview? I'm the cameraman on these things, for God's sake, not a, not a reporter. Oh, shit. There's a signal. Damn it. Ah, there you are. Good afternoon, Miss uh, Viola, is it? Or is it Viola? I, I, you have to forgive me. I'm not, I'm not good with names. Um, uh, I definitely want to thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Um, did we mention... Uh, Yes, did I mention that I'm with the Charleston Herald? I understand you have quite a story to tell. Well, if you're up for it, let's, um, let's go ahead and get started with some questions, shall we? How exactly did you get into voice acting? I started voice acting kind of on a whim through the Chad of Fallout 76 uh, story podcast series. How did you learn about this, this Into the Mystery production? Did you have an audition? So I'd already been a fan of Alfie's and heard of him um, from his build videos. I was a big fan of those and started following him on Twitter and got a message that was sharing some of his other social media. So I decided to answer him back saying, you know, my name is Jessica. I do some voices on the podcast. And, you know, if you're ever interested, I'd be happy to audition for any machinimas that you might be producing. And he messaged me back, and it just so happened he was working on the Into the Mystery uh, series with Rifle, and um, he sent me the script, and I sent him a little snippet of myself reading his viola, and he said, yeah, you got the part. <laughs> I know like many actors, um, you know, they have to think of something emotional. Um, d did you have to channel any kind of inspiration for the voices you do? I think... One of the most important things any voice actor can do when they're preparing for a role is to really get to know your character and to, before you audition for the role, audition yourself and um, just really try the voice out, see if you can do something consistently, um, ask the writer what they envisioned for the character, because within all that information, you're going to be able to pull a voice out that's consistent, authentic, and it's going to be something you really believe in. And if you believe in the voice and you put your feeling into that voice and your emotion, then everybody else is going to believe that voice as well. What is your opinion on Viola or Viola or what, what, whatever her name is? Again, apologies. The name thing always throw me. The character. What is your opinion on her? Uh, do you like her? So... With Viola, she's kind of complicated because I can definitely um, understand the grief aspect of the character and pull from that. But in a way, she's also kind of um, a bit disillusioned, and um, she's not. Re she doesn't really live in reality. You know, she's got these grandiose ideas of uh, you know the comics and all these mysteries and, and the characters and superheroes and all that. So. You know, I think she's a little bit immature, but I think that's probably from growing up without any family after her mom died. Which of the films in this series uh, would, would you say is your favorite, and, and why? Um, so voice acting-wise, I think the second film is my favorite, and that's because there's emotion in that one, um, and it pulls from a bunch of different areas of humor and getting it all in your feels but then visually of course this last episode is my favorite 
The guys just really hit it out of the ballpark, all of them. How has the production of Machinima differed from the podcast productions you've done? So with the podcast, um, it's, it's audio production. Um, and in a straightforward way, the voices and the sounds are the star of the show. But you add a whole other element, a whole other character almost, when you branch to Machinima in the visualizations, the animation. Um, as far as voice acting goes, there's not a whole lot of difference um, for me as far as just reading the script and, and turning it in. But it takes shape in a completely different way, and it's so interesting to be able to witness the difference between the two. What advice would you give to aspiring voice actors? To any aspiring voice actors out there, I would just say to do it, to take the leap. What are you waiting for? Uh, I would say that it's so much better to look back on your life and say, I can't believe I did that than to look back on your life and say, I wish I would have done that. Because it doesn't matter whether you fail or you succeed. Either way, you're going to learn something. And any accomplishment begins with the decision to try. So just do your research, start networking, and out of all of that will come a day where an opportunity will present itself, and you'll just have to make that decision to put yourself out there and try something new. Okay, th this next uh, series of questions are definitely for inquiring minds because we, you know, we all want to know after watching these films. Why does Viola, uh, Viola wander around effectively unarmed at all times? Oh, well, that's easy. I'm a sneak build. You don't need a weapon when you can just sneak right by your enemies. What does she miss the most about the pre-war world? Oh, well, I've thought about this one a lot. Clean underwear and indoor plumbing. I guess the two kind of go hand in hand a bit. But I'd let a Mirelurk spawn give me the whoopsies if it meant I could take an actual shower again. How did she spend her days before becoming an initiate of mystery? Well, mostly I just wander the wasteland lamenting the loss of my mama. Almost everywhere I go, something reminds me of her. The sculptures at White Springs. The fountain at Ingram Mansion. Disease vile ticks. Finally, we'd just like to give a little thanks to Gamer Girl FSM, also known as Jessica, to many of us here in the community. Your work has been fabulous in these films, and um, I, I know Commander Johns wanted me to reach out to you as well while I have you, and, and just um, thank you as well for the hard work that you've put in on some of their productions as well over at the 5-0. Sorry, boys, just had to slip that in there. Um, but at any rate, um, we really appreciate you um, calling in and uh, being here with us uh, this afternoon. So everyone, please give it up for Gamer Girl FSM, also known as Jessica. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you to the Fallout 5 and Dutch for having us around today. And thank you to the whole Fallout community for all your support and for watching us tell our stories. Stay tuned for episode four. Damn it, Hawkins. How did I let you and Commander Johns talk me into this interview? I'm the cameraman on these things, for God's sake, not a, not a reporter. Oh, shit. There's a signal. Damn it. Ah, there you are. Good afternoon, Miss uh, Viola, is it? Or is it Viola? I, I, you have to forgive me. I'm not, I'm not good with names. Um, uh, I definitely want to thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Um, did we mention... Uh, yes, did I mention that I'm with the Charleston Herald? I understand you have quite a story to tell. Well, if you're up for it, let's, um, let's go ahead and get started with some questions, shall we? How exactly did you get into voice acting? I started voice acting kind of on a whim. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is me again, Dutch. Um, welcome back. Uh, and listening to Jessica, a gamer girl, Viola, Viola, as uh, she goes by so many names, as most vo voice actors do, um, you can see the level of production that goes into any of these films, these projects. Um, it is to a point where, you know, it, it literally becomes, and we were discussing on the backstage here, um, it's a full-on production company at some point where you are having meetings and having to arrange schedules and, uh, you know, filming and, uh, you know, catering and all of that. Um, you know, it's, it's a legit full project. So 
Um, I wanted to take a few moments to allow um, the group here to, uh, one, take some questions from the audience if there are any, and if not, um, or as well, to allow them to kind of say some final words. We would love to hear about what projects you may have in the future. And um, I do want to give a little shout out to Rifle Gaming, who uh, was not able to attend this evening, and that's um, but um, I'm sure the gentleman may give us a little word about his involvement as well. So, um, gentlemen, why don't you take it away if we have any questions? Um, Grace, you know, feel free to chime in if there's any any questions. But if not, gentlemen, what are your future plans? And, um, you know, how was uh, a Rifle involved in this production as well? Go ahead. Rifle's a well, great target to shoot at. <laughs> of course you're going to break problem. Well, I'll begin just by saying that uh, this whole project began really based on Rifle's insight that I think it was something like only, and I forget now, so don't quote me on this, but something like 15% of players on the Xbox platform yeah, had actually... Yeah, really low percentage. Yeah, it, it was, was six. Uh, yeah, six. It was like 6%. Thing. And like 6.15. Yeah. And it was this insight, and um, he and I had been talking, and uh, he wanted to do something with me and to do something machinima, because you know he's done so many <clears throat> awesome machinima in the past, which are much more sort of um, based around um, fight sequences and really having lots of group lore play. And it was this insight which then led him to say, well, look, well, let's do something with the Mistress of Mystery. And all the way from that beginning point up until now, I doubt that he knew where we would end up. But he's been with us all the way through it. Right. And now that he's helming Chapter 4, he's he's really come back into the mode of filmmaking and can't wait to see um, you know, his treatment of the material. And it's really funny stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a shame we can't be here tonight, but busy guy right i will say i remember watching uh, one of his videos where he did uh utilize kind of a machina-esque approach to um walking us through one of the quests and i was like that's a damn good idea so look where it's gone absolutely mm -hmm. yeah so what about the future for you guys what uh what are the plans i know we have um episode four coming out when, when do you anticipate that being uh in our projectors Tell no secrets. Uh, tell them lies. <laughs> Understood. You know, yeah. don't, know. don't put yeah. a timestamp. I get it. So then you're never late. I understand. Understood. All right. What about um, each of you? Uh, I know you have uh, differing endeavors. Uh, if you want to, please feel free to um, you know plug any one of your other productions or things that you might want to, people to know. And um, ladies and gentlemen, also throughout the stream, we have been dropping the addresses and ways to contact each one of these individuals. Uh, please feel free to um, look them up, follow them, um, you will not be disappointed at all. Um, it, just an amazing group of creators. So, gentlemen, last words. Uh, I'll, um, I'll pull the nice stuff. Uh, Pre-order Orcs in Space from your local comic book shop. Visit pre -order the website. Orcs in Space from your local comic shop. <laughs> Orcs in Space. Uh, visit my website, bymichaeltanner.com. I also host a podcast called Burn After Pitching. It's a comedy pitching podcast from the Grand Geek Gathering Network. It's a monthly show, so it's not a big time commitment. Uh, but yeah, that's all my stuff. Awesome. And uh, we have his uh, uh, web address in the chat right now. So feel free to click on that, folks. And uh, next up. Oh, I'll go um, next. This, I'll go oh. next. This is Valpist. Um My next project is basically to take, um, I started everything with making a horror trailer called The Town. And that's what brought me into this uh, this machine of a series from these guys. So and I appreciate that all this, the opportunity that you guys have given me with here to, to kind of help you explain your story and to go forward. I've, I've kind of been invigorated with this. Um, and I decided to bring that trailer into a full length film, at least as far as I can take it to where it's at least compelling to watch without being kind of, without being bored of it. So that's where all my attention will be focused on. I've actually learning unreal engine, um, learning like ZBrush and working with um, just CGI and building artifacts, building assets, and kind of tying that into the mission. I haven't figured out how much is going to be the game versus that yet, um, but I'm in the writing process and in the pre-production process 
And I'm not sure uh, exactly when that's going to be released yet, but that's uh, it's in the works and it's being started. My God, yes, that sounded like all of the Greek to me, and that that's impressive. <laughs> well done, well done. All right, and uh, who do we have next on the list here? Go. Uh, I guess well, I'll, I'll go. Yeah, no, you go, no, Salt. All right, so I've got two projects coming up after this one. I'm going to be working with the On Trade. Look them up on Facebook with Lazarus of Death and them on a machinima, and I'm also going to be helping vaultist with the town machinima so that's awesome. all i got planned for the future besides going to playstation and launching nukes at fallout 5.0 all right y'all didn't hear that from here all right we'll, <laughs> we'll be waiting sir we, we we have been here for two and a half years and we have seen many of your like but we, w we would welcome you with with stem packs and water all the like as well so, all right and all are welcome Alfie, how about you, sir? Well, I think, well, so I'll be helming chapter five, which will close off the episode. I'll work really closely with Voltist on that and Rifle, but really to try and do justice to the preceding episodes and to bring us to a conclusion on that. And part of that is like Rifle, uh, sorry, like Voltist intimated, like a lot of it is to do with ripping assets from the game. Oh bringing them into rendering engines like Unreal and then arranging them so that you can neatly move between the world of the film, you know, the machinima and the 3D render world. So that's probably the next major undertaking um, that I'll be on. And Michael knows very well that he gives me a script and that's fine. I like, <laughs> yeah, I'm so, I'm you know, not that. All the scripts. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, other than that, I've just, well, I've started work uh, over the last few weeks on my next board game. Uh, but that's Ooh. very much in a kind of nation state. So the main thing that I'm doing is focusing on my board game to get through to um, localization publishing deal, uh, a localization deal, basically, so that I don't have to handle the publishing but can handle the other stuff. Fantastic. Um, and those are the two main things. Yeah, but really looking forward to where we go with chapters four and five. And... Yes, and to be completely honest, I'm really looking forward to the town. <laughs> yeah, that uh, yeah, it's gripping just from the just the small little preview. So, well, um, with that, I want to give a big and warm thank you to this group of individuals, this group of creators. They have been incredibly patient with us as we work through all the many technical issues. They have come on uh, with us to do be really the grand opening of our cinema and uh, to experience all the flubs and things that happen with it. So uh, gentlemen and Vault, uh, excuse me, Gamer Girl, we thank you very much for enduring the process and being willing to come back and have a, a rocky yeah, moment. Yeah. Um, for those of you so who are wonderful. watching, we are going to be, again, uh, we will be uh, issuing a replay that has very clean of video. So we will announce that in our uh, social media so that you can click immediately and watch anything that you may have missed. There are some epic scenes that you don't want to miss out on. So please take a look at those as well. I can speak for all of us. We are all very excited to w witness the number four after what we have seen. And uh, we are looking for the next bar to be raised from all of the works that you are creating for all of us here to, to gobble up. So with that being said, um, our next guest in the uh, cinema is going to be Uranium Fever. Uh, he has come on the scene pretty hot. Um, we know him from his builds, but he has uh, now begun incorporating machinima to display the builds and actually create some lore stories behind each of the builds. So a very unique approach um, to build videos. Uh, you can watch in our credits here. We're going to that he has uh, provided us to whet your appetite for the next uh, Watoga Cinema Machinima Festival. And then later in the month, uh, maybe perhaps in June, we are having Bundekut, uh, again, a massive uh, producer of content and documentaries. So a big lineup of individuals coming into the red carpet area. Uh, we will put the plaque of the uh, Voltus Bloody Mess Salt Michael Tanner on the founder's wall right here below my feet if you're looking at the stage yes we're going to put your name there 
as uh, the first to open our cinema. Thank you all for joining us this evening, for enduring, and uh, we appreciate your patience. And I'm going to take you out with our credits now. Be sure to stay and watch that Uranium Fever trailer. Prisoner says he's ready to talk, Captain. The radiance of our Lord will burn holes in your tin boat. What happened? Goldfist ambush, Captain. We fought him off, but they got a lucky hit on the stern. We waited and waited, but war, war comes for you. And your death follows. Did I fail? Could this have been prevented? Get him back! Right.